is over the goal line to score on the year. This is the NFL, sponsored by Edge Shave Gel, ultimate closeness, ultimate comfort. That's the Edge. Hi, I'm Steve Sable. On today's edition of our 75th anniversary series, we're naming the greatest all-around football player of all time. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I now put forth the name Ken Huff. Every career begins on draft day, and the greatest player's career began in the 1975 draft when the Baltimore Colts selected guard Ken Huff with the third pick overall. The fourth pick belonged to the Chicago Bears. They settled for a running back from Jackson State. His name, Walter Payton. They have often said probably the best running back combination ever in the league would be Walter Payton and any other back. Keep going, keep going, fighting for more yards. I identify myself as I, I played with Walter Payton. Keep going, keep going, fighting for more yards. He was the best overall football player I've ever seen. Keep going, keep going, fighting for more yards. What makes a great player? The ability to endure. To be there when you feel like being there and to be there when you don't feel like it. And Walter endured. He was there for 13 years. Quick pitch to Walter, looking for the record, cuts back, and he's got it! He's out of it at 25 and a 26-yard line. Walter Payton becomes the National Football League all-time leading rusher, surpassing Jim Brown. Keep going, keep going, fighting for more yards. Such a simple philosophy for a most complex player. Who is Walter Payton, the man they call Sweetness? He is uh, really the joker. He came in on a terrible cold day from practice. Somehow he was able to get in early. They locked the locker room and went in the shower, and the coaches and the players were all outside freezing until the janitor finally let them in. He called my wife at you know, 3 o'clock in the morning or, or, or 12 at night and pretend that he was a, a, you know, a girl. He had a very high force to begin with. Yeah, I did a lot of stuff. It was fun, too. He was famous for leaping over the pile. And infamous for untying shoestrings while at the bottom of it. This mischievous, fun-loving side of Peyton's personality was revealed on the field by a quirky little move called the show pony kick. It's kind of a little signature he had when he'd break out of a pack and get some open ground. He'd make a little jump, actually, and, and a kind of a stride in midair. And to me, it reminded me of a little show pony galloping around the ring. While the show pony kick symbolized playfulness, another side of Peyton's personality and running style dealt with a steadfast seriousness. He punished opponents, but first, he punished himself. He had a regimen that was to, to defied what the U.S. Marines would do. He ran hills endlessly, could bench press 400 pounds and leg lift 700. He loved to practice. And when this serious side of Peyton took the field, the show pony became a rampaging stallion. I always remember being on the field before a playoff game in 85 and hearing him in the middle of the huddle. I mean, he sounded like a wild man. When you got an opportunity to hit somebody and to really nail somebody, that, uh, that was what the game was all about. And I just didn't want everybody else to have all that fun on defense, so I took a little bit of defense over to the offense. Instead of being hit, I kind of attacked people and I hit them. Peyton was relentless, and he ran with a fury. Uh, it was like he was mad all the time. Just being able to watch him be explosive, I'm telling you, people just didn't want to tackle him. He punished him. He's a guy that you didn't want to play against uh, week after week after week. 
because you knew he was going to get you. Every time he had the ball, it was an explosion. I compared it to bat speed. And when Walter knew he was going to get hit, he put great bat speed on that tackler. I mean, he just exploded into tacklers. Great, great strength. You know, he had that flipper, as he called it, the forearm. Players used to do to kid about how it was like Popeye's forearm. And if you watch the film, he would use that thing like a club. He ran so hard and so violently, it just didn't seem fair for defenders. Sometimes Sweetness even handicapped himself just to level the playing field. One time I pulled up around the corner and Walter was behind me and, and he said, don't hit the first guy, hit the second guy. I hit the second guy and sprung him for a, a long run. So back in the film session, we got a chance to take a look at it. And so my coach said, my office line coach said, how come you didn't hit the first guy? Walter whispered to me, don't hit him. I got him. Every time I touched the ball, I was hit, or I was being hit, or I was close to being hit. Whenever I uh, had breakaways, I'd probably have to hit about four or five people and drag two more until they fell off before I had a 40-yard run. Over his career, he played in 190 out of a possible 191 games. In a battle of survival, he was the fittest. I had to learn how to survive, otherwise I would have been, been, been a statistic. 16,726 yards. If Emmett Smith were to have nine more thousand-yard seasons, he'd still fall short. But Sweetness was much more than just a runner. He played one game at quarterback. He threw nine career touchdown passes, and he threw thousands of devastating blocks. But both his statistics and his versatility will always be overshadowed by his desire. He was only 5 feet 10 inches tall, but no one who ever played the game had a bigger heart than Walter Payton. Everybody looks at this physical quality or that physical quality and forget about the heart. And the heart's what makes the great ones. Walter Payton, he's too short, too short in my butt. I mean, he's got the heart. I can remember a time he had a terrible knee up in Minnesota, and Fred Cato, who was our trainer, said there's no way he can play. He gained 175 yards with a knee that nobody else would have dressed with. I mean, the day he set the single game rushing mark, he had the flu so bad he was throwing up and had a fever, and he ran for 275 yards. After 13 years, Peyton retired. Surely no one had a tougher time saying goodbye to the game. He lost hard. He lost hard, and that was the ultimate losing, knowing he was walking away from it. He was a warrior. That's the way you have to look at it. And it's hard for a warrior to lose, you know? I can't imagine that Geronimo and Coach Chiefs and those guys took it too well when they lost that last time. Every warrior is remembered for his spirit and his battle cry. When you see a runner fighting for yardage, you'll see Peyton's spirit. And if you listen closely, you might hear his battle cry. Keep going, keep going, fighting for more yards, more yards, more yards.